Hey ho guys, welcome back to episode 4 of Satisfactory. I'm gonna be starting off up here because I want this power slug, which we have seen from below a couple of times before. And I actually want to use this to up our concrete production and also to show it to you. So I'm just gonna pick this up. Oh, I may have shown that actually, how to pick it up. Yeah, but I didn't show how to make the crystals from it, right? So this is how you do that. Oh, and then there's the other slug over there, but that's pretty far away. And also I believe that on this bridge there's a rather big baddie, so I'm not gonna tackle that just yet. This one is in the middle of the poisonous gas, so we can only access that later. But there was one back here, I saw it before, oh yeah, over there. So I'm just gonna pick that up as well, so we can upgrade both our concrete productions. And as I mentioned before, with each of these slugs you can upgrade your production of one building by 50%. So, and you can put three into a building at most. And actually there's more iron over here, look, there's two here. And then you can't really see that, but I know about it, in fact. And the scanner will show it, there's two here. And then there's four back there. So this also is a an area with a lot of iron, which we will surely use later, but not quite yet. Okay, so we just go to our crafting bench and craft them. That's not so interesting, but you can see that each of these power slugs will give us one power shard. That's why the recipe also says power shard one, even though I don't have one. That's kind of confusing, I think, because I always mix that up with these numbers here that tell you how many of those you can craft with what you have, but it's actually the recipe one for one power shard. And if you get the yellow power slugs, you can actually get two shards from one slug, and for the purple ones, even five. So those are a bit better. Now we have two of those power shards. So I'm just gonna go over here. And as we already mentioned, this needs 45 limestone per minute for max efficiency, but this only produces 30. So I'm just gonna chuck in one of those. And then I can upgrade the clock speed to 150%. And now you can see it also produces 45 per minute. So now this is gonna run at max efficiency and produce like, yeah, 50% more concrete, which is kind of nice. So the next thing I want to do is get the upgrade for the part assembly, because we need those parts to unlock the next uh, tier of the space elevator, right? We need the rotors and then we need reinforced iron plates, but first of all the rotors. So I want to select that and make sure to grab all the parts we need for that. And you may as well follow me doing that, because then we can also check how many resources we got. This, yeah, well, so 500 wires, not a problem. And then I got some here, which is actually enough already, except for the rods, even though I'm not even producing here anymore. And yeah. As I mentioned many times, the beauty of automation. Now I can actually jump and grab this. And see, now we can also take all the rods we need. And while I'm here, I'm just going to chuck in the other power shard here. And of course, this is also going to increase the power consumption, right? So this is five, it takes five megawatts right now. If I chuck in this and drag it up, open it again, you can see it's 9.6 now. So it's, so it's actually twice as much, almost, for only 50% more production. And that gets worse if you overclock it more, so overclocking, yeah. It's generally not a good idea if you can just place a second building. But in this case, for the miners you can't really do that, so there. I think it's okay to do that. So now we can actually do the hub upgrade 
even though we can't because I'm an idiot because I didn't pick up enough wires because I need cables as well so I'm just gonna grab some cables real quick there we go and launch milestone reached nice More complex assembly of parts can now be automated yep namely the reinforced iron plates and the rotors. Now we have the new machine, the assembler, which actually takes 15 megawatts. I didn't remember that. That's a lot. And it costs modular frames and the rotors to make. And actually we can also automate the reinforced frame. Reinforced, uh, the, the, not the reinforced modular frames. They're not even called reinforced modular frames, they're called heavy modular frames, but that comes later on in the next tiers. So yeah, with this machine we can take, as you can see on the image already, it takes two inputs. So you can feed in, for example, screws and iron plates and make reinforced plates from that. And using this will require a bit of production planning and a bit of a bit of bigger footprint as well. So I'll have to lay down some more foundations up there and then we can take a look at how we can automate this a little bit more efficiently. Oh, well I guess I ran out of fuel right now. Yeah, capacity zero. So I'm gonna have to check on my fuel. What I was gonna say is that I actually just set up those two extra smelters because We'll need more materials for what I want to do. I actually want to start off by automating modular frames. Modular frames will require a bunch of materials and actually we won't be able to pull that off just yet at full efficiency because for that we would need faster conveyors because a reinforced plate crafting assembler thing will require 120 screws a minute and you only have one conveyor going in and that can only transport 60 right now so that's actually not enough that is why we'll need the mark 2 conveyors for that but we don't have them yet but it will still work it will just not be as efficient but for that we will need a total of four lots of iron plates and six lots of iron rods so what i'm going to do for now is just put up these two as iron plates so I'll have all the iron plates and then we already have four times rods here so we're still missing two rods but I will just leave that like this because we won't be able to use the screws as fast anyway so it's perfectly okay to split them for now and later on when we have the faster conveyors and the faster miners we can upgrade these miners and then we won't have a problem anymore because then these will be pretty quick. Then we'll have twice as much as uh, twice as much iron, and then this issue will go away as well. But right now I'll just have to check on my biofuel. And the beauty is that hopefully we should now yeah these are all empty probably yeah. So we should now have biofuel in here. Look at that. Because this remember we set this up to automatically produce biofuel. And actually we have enough to, set, to start all the generators. And yeah, this is not even out of wood yet. Look, we gathered so much wood, this is still running. So whenever, as soon as we fire this back up, we will just keep producing more biofuel, which is awesome. Like so, just fill them all up. This is the first time I'm putting in 200 as well per, per generator. So this should last a lot longer now. And actually our consumption is pretty high already. We're at 110 sometimes when spiking. So we can't even connect any more machines really. And at least not the assemblers. So for that I'm gonna need more power. Didn't expect that to happen so soon. Well, anyway, as I was saying, we want to let these build iron plates and I'll just set up the 
add the constructors for that and hope that it doesn't go down. So for the constructors, I'll need yeah reinforced iron plates. So what I like to do is just plonk down a craft bench and make everything I need for the reinforced plates right here. And there we go. Much easier than running back to the hub. So the constructors have to face that way and be aligned with these other machines like so. Why can't I build it there? Is this actually off? Ah, this is off-centered, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I'll just have to take down this whole conveyor thingy here. And rebuild the smelter one over. Because if the smelter, of course, isn't in the center of its foundation, then I won't be able to connect the uh, the output with a straight line and that would look awful so I don't want to do awful looking things just yet I mean I will probably at some point but for now it's still what's wrong here okay so for now it's still feasible to make everything look nice so I want to keep that going as long as possible now this needs a power connection, iron ingots, there we go. Nice, so now I can also set up the constructor, yeah. Only that it's the wrong way around. Like so. Connect these up, connect these up. Iron plates, iron plates. Now I'll have to build these. Let's see, so they go right here and here. And I don't have cables anymore. Easy as one, two, three. This way, like so, like. Oh, it's already connected. Okay. So, what's the consumption like? Yeah, 114. So that's cutting it pretty close, but it looks like it's still fine. However, I will have to build one or two more biomass generators in the future. And afford. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix because as we're on the production level, I can just pick up some. Now connect this, and we got plates. Nice. So now this is actually all the ingredients we need as I said except for the two sets of rods that we can't produce yet because there's not enough iron here so either we could go over there or back there as I showed you there's a lot more iron sources of course we could connect those up and pipe in the iron with a huge conveyor belt but I don't want to do that just yet and for now I just want to keep it like this and reserve some spots where we can later on up our iron production with the beta minus and then just increase it that way. So yeah, next step would be to install the assemblers back here, but as I said we don't have enough power for that, so first of all I'll have to build some more generators. And to do that, I'll take the bigger foundations, because here we're on the ground. Up there I'm just using the slim ones to not have to not lose so much headroom on the level below. But with this, um, it's probably a good idea to 
build it like so. This is gonna be a bit wacky, but that's connected as well. And now I don't have biofuel, of course, to fuel that. So I'll just have to grab some from here. And you know what? I might actually just make some myself. Yeah, I might just make some myself just to speed up the process a bit. I don't need a crafting bench for that because we're so close to the hub. So I'll just go and fire those up and you don't really have to watch me do that. So actually I realized I'm talking about automating modular frames and I didn't even show you how to make them. So it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Um, anyway, we know how to make reinforced plates, right? Reinforced plates cost 4 iron plates and 24 screws. And if you put that into an assembler, it will produce five reinforced iron plates a minute, which will mean it will require 120 screws and 20 plates. So four belts of plates and four, yeah, four belts of plates and four belts of screws can actually feed three assemblers making reinforced iron plates. And that's what we're going to do because for the modular frames, on the other hand, we will need three reinforced iron plates and they are made at the same production time. So this machine to run at full efficiency will need three machines making reinforced iron plates for it. And we want to run it uh, we want it to run at full efficiency of course. So that's why we're gonna do it like that. But for now I'm just gonna make some by hand. I made the reinforced iron plates right now. And I'm gonna make these like so because of course we need them to set up the assemblers in the first place and also we need some rotors actually we don't need 24 I made a bit too many screws that's actually enough as you can see in the to-do list and we're gonna need some more cables as well so I'll just grab that nice so now I have to come up with a layout how I want to place these and that's not going to be so easy actually because I don't know I mean I like these conveyor lifts I would like to do something involving them so I could probably make like two levels of conveyors like one level at the bottom where I just move I don't know like the screws and then one over the top where I move the reinforced plates yeah, that's probably a good idea. So I do have rods on the far right, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna need rods for the modular frame recipe as well. And that's why I will need two lots of rods, like these over here. This is rods and rods. So I'll just pipe these around the outside and into the final layer of assemblers and then in the in between layer I'm just gonna have three assemblers making the reinforced plates from everything from here to the left and that's actually hang on yeah from this to the left <laughs> so I will just as we have four lots of plates and only two lots of rods for now I'll yeah I got an idea so first of all I need constructors and I can't afford those because I need more reinforced plates oh gosh it's really time to automate those so I'll need two for now two constructors to make the screws and I can already afford those as I made too many screws before nice so I've got these rods here and the one to the left is rods as well, okay. So I'll make the constructor like so and like so. Connect those up and tell them to make screws. And as I said before, this is not going to be very efficient because 
these can only produce 90 per minute. Actually they can produce 90 per minute but I can't even get those 90 out so it's just going to be 60 per minute and I need 360 and I've only got 120 so I got a third of the production only. But that's fine for now. So next I need the assemblers and the assemblers should go on this level really. I'm wondering, did those become less wide too? No, they didn't. Okay. So these are still too wide for this grid. So I guess, yeah, I mean, I'm going to redo this at some point probably. But I'll just plunk them down like so. Just so that it looks a bit nicer. Line like that. And like that. Actually, why am I building four? I just need three. Okay, and now I got the plates to, to put in. And that's pretty easy because I can just put mergers in front of each of these. Because remember, I need 20... Yeah, I probably probably want to do that further back. I'm not sure, really. Let me think about that for a second. Holy moly, this took me way longer than it should have. Now, take a look at this. We got the constructors here making the screws, which they aren't doing yet because they don't have power, but yeah. Remember, it's just two for now, so we'll have to do some merging conveyor magic down here in the end to yeah to get these to work properly and then for now we just have one output going to that constructor one going to that constructor and the other one in the middle is just not going to run because it won't have any screws but that doesn't matter for the plates we already have all the plates so i could set that up already and essentially you just have one lift coming out of a container full of plates going all the way over here, back down, and then oops, then connecting up to the input. But one container can only provide 15 per minute. I mean, now it's full, it can provide more. But this constructor can only provide, it's sustained 15 per minute, but we need 20 per minute. So we actually need to take one lot of 15 and split it up into three and put these in as well. So we have those belts coming in with full iron plates, one, two, and this one, three. And then you have a fourth belt carrying iron plates, this one. And that will go into the middle and then be split once, go up to here and be merged into that. And also supply plates to here. And then it's gonna go over there be split again behind that you can't really see it down there there and then um, half of it is gonna go up here and half of it is gonna go back there now you might be thinking hang on this splitter will split it into two so actually half the plates will go in here and only half will go over here being split again so actually this one gets half and those get a quarter each instead of a third each which is true and I could actually split it into three but then I would have more conveyors going around and I like the looks more like this and also it's not going to be a problem because this machine is going to back up eventually with iron plates because one full belt and a half is more plates than it can actually use so therefore this the input buffer of this will actually run full of plates and as soon as that is full this merger won't take out more than a third anymore and then these can also fill up so as soon as I turn this on it will briefly be less efficient because these will this one will have to buffer up iron plates first but that doesn't matter because the system is so full anyway that you have all the plates going everywhere and yeah, that's not going to be an issue. And also, we don't have any screws, so 
that's going to be the limiting factor anyway. And later on it's going to run perfectly efficiently. And for the screws, as I mentioned, <coughs> sorry, as I mentioned for the screws, I'll have to find a solution later on. That's why I reserved all the bottom floor here um, for the screws. So this is just going to be transporting screws around and all the things above are for plates. So this should make an automated three sets of iron plates as soon as it's running, as I said. Now the only thing I'm still missing for it is power. So I will have to set up a power line and first of all those need power so well that's gonna be tricky actually do I have any power back there? yeah I do that I can use so I might actually go ahead and hang on plunk down the power pole right here and right here and then I can connect the power line over to here there and have power for these. So those are making screws now and you'll be able to see that the screws are coming out on a full belt but this thing is still going to be backing up. See? Now we've got 9 next time it finishes it's going to be more than that. 11 one more time it's already 13 so this is going to back up because this conveyor belt is too slow as we said but that doesn't matter for now. Now I want these to be off actually or hang on I have to check my power level yeah actually I can afford to turn them on nice so because one of them isn't running anyway I'll just need 30 megawatts and I have that to spare so I guess I'll put the power lines in this row So one is just going to go there, and there, and there. And I'm going to set this to standby just to be sure. That it doesn't turn on for some reason fry my power circuit, I don't want that. Okay, so now I ran out of cables, great. Do I have wire? I actually do. Great, so some more cables. I need to automate that as well, definitely. So now I have to set this to reinforced iron plates. And it will take in both ingredients. And yeah, as I said, this, the screws are going to be the limiting factor, making it pretty slow. But still, it's starting to produce. This one is offline no screws and this one can also make reinforced iron plates and we will be able to see shortly yes this is our first automated reinforced iron plate isn't that awesome now with those and the rods from back there we could actually go ahead and make the the modular frames already but I don't want to do that because I'll also need a lot of those reinforced plates and I can just manually make the couple of modular frames that I'll need for now. So I guess the next thing that is really up to be done is the next space elevator upgrade. So this is what I want to do next. We're now making reinforced iron plates, so I'll just let that produce for a moment. and. The rotors we'll have to manually make for now, but that's not an issue. And then we will be able to unlock coal power, and with coal power we can then make a lot more power than that. I mean, this is 160 megawatts. We can go up straight to 250 or maybe even 500 megawatts 
using the coal power and then power is not going to be an issue for a moment. So yeah, last thing I want to do because I forgot it so many times is to check on the research because our sulfur research should be done and I'm thrilled to see what it does actually. It's completed. Percentage of sulfur in compounds is acceptable and can be extracted safely to create gunpowder-based explosives. Oh, yes. The derived milestone can be found in Tier 4. Further research required for more precise use. Nice. So we're actually getting explosives now. I was hoping for that. You just start some other research, whatever. Um, so we're actually getting explosives because there's some places around the map I'm going to show you when we go exploring where there's like cracked rocks they look very destructible and they're placed on top of resource nodes or sometimes they're placed on uh, before the entrance of caves or something so they're blocking things but it's pretty obvious from the game design that they're supposed to be removable and until now they weren't, but apparently the sulfur research chain now allows you to make explosives and to blow things up. And we're making a lot of concrete, holy shit. Yeah, so I'm going to be wrapping up this episode right here. Thank you very much for watching. Next time we're going to be focusing on the space elevator, and if you liked this episode, make sure to check back for then. So bye bye.